This is another series of recordings taken from the research file of the Institute. As you may know, these were made during experimental tests with carefully selected volunteers, chosen for their stability and their response to training in our techniques. Because the sessions involved work in unmapped areas of consciousness uh, using new methods, we began to call them our explorers. We also came to regard them as a courageous, gutsy group of individuals. In terms of methods, it must be stated that no drugs or electrical brain stimulation are used in such experimentation. The reason is not particularly ethical or legal, but more the fact that we have found clarity of consciousness is essential, under near total control and without distortion. Even a prior cup of coffee can affect the result in several of our explorer group. The recordings themselves were taken from two-way audio lines between the laboratory and isolation chamber during an experimental session. The researcher in the laboratory feeds audio signals into the headphones worn by the explorer in the chamber. In addition to such vocal reporting, electrodes attached to the explorer's head and body transmit biological information to the laboratory monitoring unit. These are recorded on separate channels for subsequent evaluation. Much of the sessions with our explorers is taken up with testing audio patterns, and we think a sample of this will give you a more balanced viewpoint of the work taking place in our facility. Here is TC, our physicist, doing just that in his own style of reporting. About 30 seconds ago, my non-physical body would oscillate with the oscillations of the tone, head-to-foot head to foot oscillations back and forth. Oscillation in my head, which is strange with this higher frequency signal. about 10 or 15 seconds ago also caused a non-physical body to oscillate. The oscillations, though, are not at the frequency of the sound. They're usually around 1 or 2 or 3 hertz. Hit a harmonic to a natural frequency. A small oscillation here. The wobbling inside the physical. This is in response to a 40 hertz, 40 hertz binaural beat. Parts to it. It seems to cause about a one cycle oscillation and also I can feel a, a much smaller four cycle oscillation, but both of them are there at the same time. Also, as the sound gets unbalanced from one side to the other, the non-physical body tends to tilt toward the side the sound is loudest on. I still feel a, a small four-cycle oscillation, the usual pulsation. When the sound was there, I had superimposed one cycle and four cycles. Sometimes it would change, sometimes both at the same time, and sometimes it would run from one up to about four. Correction, the last that we have was on a, a 400 binaural beat. Coming up is the 40 binaural beat. It wasn't a particularly plone which is probably why it gripped the attention. It was not also a particularly relaxing tone. Off right in the head, using, producing a high frequency vibration about maybe 15 hertz. Twenty hertz. Twenty hertz. 
four cycle pulsation state starting to get a little stronger. About a 10 hertz vibration in my whole body. The sound is the most pleasing of the three. The low frequencies seem to be less irritating. This is a 40 hertz binaural beat in separation. You're hearing the report on it. It doesn't grip the attention so much it tends to encourage the mind to drift and visualize this line would be very heavy almost rigid body almost like the body was made out of clay or some kind of inanimate substance but sensation right after they were turned off of sort of a collapsing sensation it was strongest with the sound that was the loudest the first one I'm in a, a, a slight four cycle pulsation state it's not real strong or violent but it's quite noticeable Test on a 1600 neural beat, 1600 beat at 4400 on one side and 6000 on the other. Particularly relaxing at all. They're probably the most attention grabbing of the series. like they intrude on your consciousness and fix your awareness to them. Which does have the good side effect of taking the awareness away from the physical. Not particularly pleasant, although not... Uh, uncomfortable or anything that will give you somewhat of an idea however on a succeeding session we had a little help and here's what took place made contact and was instructed in a different way of entering an altered state, an efficient altered state for the work that we're doing. So for the last five or ten minutes I've been practicing these instructions. It does put me in a different space I'm still a little unfamiliar yet just where that space is in relation to the ones I'm familiar with. The technique is essentially one of waking up rather than one of sleeping. I can explain it in more detail later. One one uses the 12 state as a starting point for this technique or something like a 12 state after getting to the to a 12 state type altered state one then well it sounds strange but almost proceeds to wake up to clear 
one's mind, and effort is made to clear one's mind, to work on clarity. It feels like waking oneself up, but in the process of, of waking up the mind and making it clear, very much like it is clear in awaking consciousness, the body actually tends to drift out of consciousness even further. And one is left with the strange sensation of fully waking consciousness without body, which of course is the desired goal. But this effort to wake up seems to be in a very effective approach to take after one is already in 12. The effort to mentally wake up. I'm, I'm not sure. I was just given the idea to try this. Like, you know, wake up. Wake your mind up. Clear your head. And as I began to fool with it at first I thought it would bring me out of this state would bring me back to C1 but it doesn't seem to do that at all the space is different and so it's more like a, a helping voice rather than a, a personality a very good space for communications. Um, it doesn't have the same feeling that I've come to regard as uh, like depth. It's very clear, um, very much like being wide awake in C1, mentally but physically even more body removed than 12. It's a, it's a cleaner space, a clearer space, not as foggy or as dark a space, a lighter space, not as heavy. Uh, while I was talking, I've come back to my usual uh, state, but I have been able to travel back and forth through uh, mental, mentally, you know, working at this uh, waking up thing, and then as I relax it, I immediately drift back into the familiar state. It takes some discipline. If one lets go, then one tends to drift to a less awake state. This source who doesn't really wish to make himself or identify himself, and first I thought maybe it was Thor and then I realized that that wasn't so. It was different. I tried to say, well, who are you? What is your purpose? And I just kind of got a backing away, no, not wanting to communicate there, so I thought I'd leave and come back and report. Um, after a fashion, but not human. Just a, just an intelligence. I notice that my body, hands and uh, feet, seem to alternately 
uh, sort of like tense up, like the muscles will come under tension, and I become aware of it, and then I relax them, and they sink kind of down with relaxation, and then add a little bit, I'll notice that there they are, kind of tensed up again, uh, like the muscles contract slightly. And as I relax them, I can feel them physically drop a little. Seems to be doing this involuntarily in that I don't, I don't feel any tension. It's just that occasionally I become aware that there is some. It's no discomfort or no difficulty. It just is unusual. I will go back and see what else I might find. Information. It seems the entity of which I was first speaking was somewhat of a... Uh, just one of the laborers, so to speak, in this construction project and since he kept shirking off like toward the shadows and I didn't get much information I asked to speak to somebody else somebody in charge uh, I was then confronted by what I perceive to be a humanoid entity, and instead of being off to the upper right in the shadows, was more right in front of me. And I said, what are you doing? And what and why are you doing? And his reply was quite uh, surprising. He says, well, you and your group did ask us to help out, didn't you? You have asked for assistance. And we are here to help, or we are trying to produce a, uh, almost like a, like they're building the necessary structure to aid in this communication. And the plan is when they have their part ready that they will be able to bring us to where they are so that we might communicate more easily. I asked him if he was, I said, well, will it work? Will you be able to capture some of us and bring us to your reality? And he thought that it would work, but I had detected a slight bit of uncertainty, like he was pretty sure that it would work out, but it still was probing into the unknown for him, too. No, this, this person, unlike the others, seemed to be a very a uh, dynamic and forceful type intelligence. Uh, maybe even a scientist or explorer in his own reality. He 
He spoke very directly, very matter-of-factly. Uh, like somebody who was about his, his business. Like if you walked in and asked somebody to explain what they were doing and they had full command over whatever it was that they were doing. An in-charge dynamic type. Not shocked, surprised, but I did get the feeling that he thought it was quite unusual. But he wasn't shocked. It wasn't like, what are you doing here? Or anything like that. Not commonplace, but not unexpected. Is that it? Yes, I believe so. It was like if if he's working to make clearer and better communications between his group and our group, that he was pleased with the opportunity to communicate even on a much lesser level this little bit that we have communicated. It seemed stable and complex, much as our own, but, of course, I would describe it as non-physical from my own reference point. Not within the parameters of our physical... She would describe our reality as non-physical from his own reference point. Certainly not in our reality here, our physical matter, Earth. No, no, it was outside of our physical reality. Yeah, very definitely so. The question, of course, what reality? At a later session in another testing pattern, TC met an old friend. Here's what happened. just in the sense that it was more difficult to expand the chest to draw in the air, just like a, maybe a, a lead blanket had been put over my body, making it harder to, to breathe. Not an uncomfortable sensation, just a peculiar one. I, I still feel the effects of it. It hasn't really uh, disappeared much yet. Almost like a centrifugal force, like I'm in a centrifuge being pressed into the bed. Now, can you still communicate with Thor? Oh, yes, I have been all along. He says the, the beats up in the low hundreds will facilitate visualization. Any, any specific in the low hundreds? Uh, it sort of depends. It's it's not as broad a resonance. Uh, it will be sharper for, you know, at one place for differing individuals. I kind of just sort of get anywhere from 100 to about 300 should uh, increase the visualization. And this 50 hertz thing should increase the awareness. 
And all of these tones can be played simultaneously. They can. Yes. Even though the ear will not consciously be able to differentiate and pick them out in the various beats and so on, the nervous system does indeed hear each one separately as well as all of them together. No. Uh, if the mind body can be put into a first the theta state, then a greater awareness, and then a sharper visualization, this will facilitate the healing, both self healing and healing of others. Uh, and in this sense, these, these tones will uh, aid the healing process, but they're very general. They will aid all processes that require focusing of, of uh, thought energy. I see. Related to this, uh, what, uh, would you ask for what relationship we this second self as to the physical body. The energy body, to put it as, as we understand in our use of it. Is this accurate and how does it integrate into the physical? What we already understand about it is pretty much the way it is. The the second self or energy body is a uh, truer, he says, representation of the personality and that the physical body is a projection of this energy body in physical matter reality. Uh, he actually used the analogy, it's a like a shadow on a physical matter plane. Um, it seems that the energy body itself may indeed be a shadow of a yet more refined essence of the personality. I'm not sure how far this telescoping uh, thing takes place. That's as far as it seems to go. Sorry to interrupt, but it seems that we have run out of time on this side of the cassette. So turn your cassette over and we will continue on the other side. says, oh yes, uh, uh, but not as it relates to our time. I say, does he mean on here in, or on the planet Earth, did he? Yes. And he means not relating to our time. What does he mean when he says this? Uh, he would not uh, be a contemporary. Him, uh, then, when one is there, what is this 
thing that we understand as male and female and what does that relate as to the energy body and into other areas in this telescopic, the telescopic procedure. Is this male, femaleism always present? Male and femaleness, or sexuality and physical matter reality, is an expression of a more fundamental um, well, sort of duality or differences. And here I'm not sure just what these differences are, but there seems like that that it's more fundamental than just a sexuality and the physical uh, physical plane, and that this duality that is essentially uh, the other half of balance, like. Um, in order to have balance, one needs two halves. One needs something to balance against something else. Um, it's kind of a basic uh, duality of uh, consciousness or personality, I suspect, that uh, two aspects of the same thing and this uh, this fundamental duality of of the really the individual consciousness is expressed uh, when uh, projected to the physical matter plane or when the shadow falls on the physical matter plane into male and female But the same duality is also in each individual. It's not that a, that a male is all of one type and a female is all of another type. Both the uh, balancing energies are available in each type. It's just one characterizes or exemplifies the, uh, the kind of basis of, of each of the two balancing members more than the other. Does this uh, continue to uh, exist uh, when one uses the energy body only and does not any longer inhabit the physical body? Yes, it exists, but as the energy body evolves, the duality is is brought more and more together, more and more balanced within the individual. Um, I got a, two thoughts at once there, and I, let me back up so I don't confuse them. Still, uh, in the energy body, they uh, particularly in the. It's almost again a telescoping thing. Um, various states of the energy body. Uh, as the as the energy body becomes more evolved, the duality becomes more and more balanced. Until I I expect at the at the end point, if there is an end point. Uh, these, this duality is indeed integrated into a single substance. Uh, the less, or single, uh, non-conflicting uh, personality, the less evolved, as one projects from the uh, uh, less well, as one goes to the uh, 
cruder and cruder manifestations down to physical matter reality, which, in, by the way, is, doesn't seem to be the last one in the chain. It seems yet that physical matter reality projects yet onto another. And here the, this, this duality seems to still very much be uh, a, it's not really conflicting, that's the wrong word, but um, uh, almost like different types of energy, but they're not very well integrated, and one really seeks and needs the other to balance itself. This integration process then takes place uh, as the entity evolves to where the exchange between uh, what we think of as opposite sex becomes less and less um, dramatic as the entity becomes more evolved. It's, uh, I'm not saying it real well. Um, I hope I've got the, the idea across. Certainly. Let us move to the question of, of the penetration of the area around the Earth by other beings from other spaces or places. Uh, is this taking place now? Uh, are you differentiating between physical uh, penetrations? Let's start with physical penetration first. In other words, are there are there any uh, spaceships, if we want to call them that, that are not originating in the planet Earth or by humans of Earth? Are any such in the area of the Earth at this time? The problem is with the word in the area, or with the phrase in the area of, uh, as would be regarded by such uh, space vehicles and their occupants, the answer is yes, as would be regarded by an Earth view of space, uh, it may be considered considerably removed from the area of. happens from time to time uh, where near-Earth space is, is uh, occupied by such physical alien entities, but it's not a general thing, it's not a, um, a rule, it's rather the exception. It's an occasional happening. Uh, I don't, as I look ahead in the future, I don't really see any uh, change in that status. Like, I don't see any, uh, you know, public disclosures of, uh, you know, landings on the White House lawn or anything dramatic. I see that occasionally such a traveler does enter in a near-Earth environment. Um, he does it then covertly. Uh, yes. Well, not necessarily, but uh, 
in a, let's say, discreetly, which is a refinement of the word covertly. Yes. What means of communication do they use? I don't know. Um, it seems that some are self-contained units and are not in um, any kind of routine communication with a with a base or home or origination. They are uh, independent, self-contained units, and of course are in communication with members of that unit uh, they're not they don't necessarily come in groups or packs um, I get the picture of communication taking place but I can't really tell how uh, maybe Thor will give me something uh, verbal rather than uh, visual here just a minute there are a lot of different kinds of communication. Some is uh, uh, by light, others is by uh, um, telepathy. Uh, but the telepathy somehow doesn't seem just like a natural kind of telepathy. It seems like some kind of uh, uh, device-aided uh, telepathy, where one, by having the appropriate equipment, can transmit and receive without the benefit of uh, uh, radio waves using uh, thoughts. But it's a machine-aided aided telepathy that I see. Um, then by what also, then? What power or energy do they use to uh, move their vehicles and counteract gravity? <clears throat> I don't understand it. It just essentially comes across that it works that it's, it's not uh, the kind of conventional power that we know of. It's not rocket or uh, anything like what we've thought of. But, um, they don't seem to need a, a large amount of fuel, whether they gather it as they go, like from sunlight or what, but it's not like they have to stockpile the fuel like a rocket has to have its fuel included. And when it's burned up, it needs to be re restocked. This kind of gathers fuel as it goes. Perhaps it's the uh, solar energy, I'm not sure. But it, it doesn't carry along fuel tanks, so to speak. It travels. Uh, It, it travels under an energy that uh, is just too alien for me. I don't really understand it or know how to describe it. It just sort of works. It's not within your uh, ability to understand it or experience it? I think that's the problem. And then let's turn to the penetration by non-physical entities or individuals. planet Earth, what penetration has or is taking place at this time as regard to non-physical individuals or groups. Uh, there's a, uh, just a almost infinite uh, number of non-physical entities which can 
uh, penetrate to uh, earth or to a phys physical matter uh, interaction. Now that doesn't mean that they can uh, assume a, a physical, you know, project themselves into physical matter. Uh, but they can interact with, uh, be in the neighborhood of, uh, in, around, among, and through, and with physical matter, it's it's like space is is teeming with, well, space. I say, inner space, wherever this non-physical space is, it's teeming with life like an ocean is teeming with fish and they're like all around and all different types with all different sorts of interests and and uh, some of which couldn't care less about the earth than others are very interested and they all seem to have their own thing to do or their own I don't know journey does a fish have a journey uh, I guess the salmon do and a few others but they just seem to be doing whatever it is they're doing and there's lots of them around. Now this sort of random uh, penetration of, of whoever happened to be interested and or passing by has changed some recently uh, with a higher level of organization taking place. Uh, more entities who are earth interested uh, actually uh, working lane plans uh, in some way I suppose one would say interacting with or interfering with uh, uh, humans on earth and it's much like uh, near earth future is going to be a big event uh, sort of a you know a coming attraction and this organization is centered about a preparation helping to prepare the uh, humans for this uh, big coming event, which I haven't just been given that information, but I assume they're talking about this geological uh, change, and that uh, it's sort of well known that this uh, that this big happening is uh, is about to happen. I don't understand how about to happen is defined since uh, this time thing confuses me but it's it's like there is a time and and the time is is coming close so the earth is attracting a lot more attention from non-physical uh, entities than it has in the past because of this uh, it's, it's like the uh, theaters beginning to fill or the uh, seats at the circus are starting to uh, fill up and some of which are the early uh, comers are actually uh, down there trying to uh, give moral support or encouragement or help or whatever they can to the about to be uh, performers. I think the ones that are trying to help have a have a pretty close earth tie mostly they are entities that for one reason or another re relate strongly uh, and have a lot of very good uh, positive feelings toward Earth and the Earth uh, experiment. And uh, ask Thor where he fits into this pattern. He says he likes Earth and hopes everything will work out all right. Ask him what his relationship is to you. It doesn't seem to be anything uh, personal, just uh, acquaintances. Uh, evidently, he was in the vicinity 
one time when I was requesting communications and and such a a friendship, so to speak, was uh, started up. I don't uh, have any feelings of uh, you know I, as other others have reported as a part of an oversoul and and that kind of personal relationship. I think uh, he's just. Uh, uh, kind of a, a friendly uh, entity who uh, doesn't mind sitting down for a chat once in a while. And again, I say he's earth interested. He has very uh, fun and and uh, and sort of good feelings toward uh, Earth and people. Ask him that if he will join us again then and sit down for more conversation and how much we appreciate it. Oh yes, he'll be around. Ask him if there's any particular way that you can find him again. He just laughed and uh, he's kind of uh, a little bit chagrined uh, at the nickname we've given him of Thor. and uh, But he... Uh, sort of grudgingly accepts it and indicates that uh, just essentially calling him by name will be sufficient. Ask him for a better name. <laughs> if this is what started this whole Thor business to begin with, uh, <laughs> but I'll ask him. He says that'll do. Well, evidently, any name he would grudgingly accept. So he's he's not he doesn't really relate very much to names. Um, I think the only well, no, he says it really you know doesn't uh, uh, make that much difference that Thor will will serve. He's, he's had it this long. He might as well uh, let it go. Well, then, thank you very much for this long and very interesting and significant conversation. And tell him that we will certainly make good and constructive use of the material. Okay, he was uh, actually pleased to have the conversation uh, uh, sort of renewed with him uh, when we uh, when I went into this state I kind of thought of Thor just because I had communicated with him before and made an attempt at, at uh, finding him again and it didn't come very quickly I uh, tried and, and it's just like he wasn't there and after some minutes of of uh, calling for him, sure enough, he popped up, and I was under the impression that he was a very long ways off and was no longer in the immediate vicinity, but had, well, I, I guess, uh, symbolically speaking, had heard his name and, uh, and came by, and when he did come by, he seemed to be very happy to see me, and I was very happy to see him, so it was like a, a reunion of sorts, and uh, he's... Uh, very amenable to the idea of continuing uh, discussions. That would be very good. We will hope to continue that in, a, in the very, very near future. He had just kind of given up on us and figured that we had uh, forgotten him and he didn't really expect to hear from us. It was kind of a sort of like a long lost relative calling up in the middle of the night, I guess. <laughs> well, tell him that we will not we will not make it so long the next time. Okay. And thank him, and then begin your return slowly and easily back to one. Okay. Debriefing. Debriefing. Would you like a rebalance?
sponsor for you? Uh, a what? Would you like that balancing formula, or would you feel it's necessary? Uh, um, no, I don't. I don't think it's necessary. Just, uh, just take me a little bit to take your get that heavy lead blanket off. That okay. stayed with me <laughs> from when that tone went off. It never really left me. Take your time. By all means. Yeah, it seemed, right. seemed like the only way to get rid of it really was to move. Let's see if I can find a recharger here thing. It's kind of funny the way Thor was uh, he's sort of putting words in my mouth. I was speaking, but he was he was putting words there. And occasionally as something would come out a little strange and I wasn't quite sure whether it was said or the way he had intended, I'd kind of ask him, is that all right? He'd kind of pat me on the shoulder uh, in a figurative way and say, you're doing fine, you know. Just, uh, that's that, that's the way I said it. Or that, that's the way I intended it. Keep right on going. It's okay. Very good. You know, so it was, he was encouraging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have a visual picture of him at all? Or did you, or was it just a... No, just a... Just a presence feeling. Um, yeah, I I suppose I suspect so. It wasn't a well, I don't know. I, in the absence of any shape at all, I expect I kind of filled in something that was taller than it was wide because that's the way people come. Yeah. But uh, most of them. There wasn't any detail in it. You know, I didn't I didn't see like arms and legs and toes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Was definitely male though. Yeah, he's definitely male. Mm -hmm. I know you used the he a great deal, and mm -hmm. so I presumed that it was me. Well, I will give you some light, but get your arms and legs going, because I don't have a gauge on you, so I don't know where uh, you are. Well, that heaviness is beginning to leave pretty well. How long was that? And there you have it, an example of what happens when a simple research effort is complicated by the entrance of a third party, so to speak. Perhaps a better word is improved or augmented instead of complicated. In any event, it should provide something for everyone, a little technology in a backstage view of our research effort, something about spaceships, a perspective on an upcoming big event, and the who and how of someone who doesn't mind being called Thor. I hope you've enjoyed it, and this is Robert Monroe with a Lowell Thomas. So long for now.